We are going to have some hosts, I guess. We're waiting for Mam Lumbuka to, to come up as a host. Thank you for joining us and for joining us again. I hope uh, see me can get this, can be connected. I don't know if I'm being seen because I'm saying others are failing to log in. If someone can see me and hear me clearly, please say something. That way I will know that people are, are getting me. So maybe we try and redo this again. Facebook, oh, there we are. Mam Mbuka is here, she's joining. Awesome. She's the first. All right, we are ready to go. My host is in now. Mam Mbuka, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Okay, morning. So you're welcome, as usual, to our Sunday House of Talk. Mwabe, thank you for facilitating the Zoom. Thank you for everything, Mam Mbuka, for your fervent um, love and then every day being on the wheel to make sure these things happen. Folks around the world, you're all welcome. This is our Sunday morning household talk. We always have, <clears throat> and this is going to continue. And this is, and I know for those who have been with us for a while, you will attest that this is awesome. So, so today, I think we'll begin with a summary, a, a recap from last week's uh, teaching, uh, uh, last week's study. Please, I want it to be summarized so that people who did not get probably what I said, said can hear it from another perspective. So I have with me Mamlumbuka as a host. Folks, this is the place where we come to, dis to, to discuss the absolute truth, the truth which is uh, making us concentrate on who we are, not wavering on things which are distracting us in this world. So I think the, straight on, I'll see you on the other side. I will ask Mamun Buka to come on. And please share, 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 let everyone come in and, and listen to this. Mamun Buka, it's your show, you're welcome, thank you. Let me see if we are recording from Zoom. Recording in progress. All right. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for the um, privilege to be able to yeah. give a summary. Yeah of uh, last Sunday's talk. I hope I'm audible enough. You are very audible now. Okay. Um, I think last Sunday was quite um, uh, insightful, very, very uh, powerful session we had. Um, I was on the road, but I was able to listen through again using the recordings. So, yeah. So I think you started by um, asking us a question as to what are we missing why are we missing the mark what is it that making that's making us miss the mark so you you reminded us that as long as our minds uh as long as our minds can be deceived then we are not free and you also told us that the truth is what sets you free and you mentioned to us that deception um brings in fear and fear is a mind killer then you also showed us in Psalms 8 um, where the Bible says, what is man that thou hast mindful of him, the son of man that, that you visit him. You've made him a little lower than the angels and you've crowned him with glory and honor. So he made man a little lower than the angels so that he can magnify the angels. Then you likened it to the planet Mars, just like Mars appears like a star from a distance, but closer, it's a planet. So the son of man might look a little lower than the angels. A man might, the son of man might look a little lower than the angels, but he's an angel. He's a message, message, message carrier. Then you also took us to Matthew 24, where Jesus uh, answered uh, the disciples that take heed that no man deceive, deceives you. Many will come and say, I'm the Christ. So you, you mentioned to us that many, many even now still say they are the ultimate Christ, but Christ is the body of them all. It's a parliament. You likened it to everyday uh, systems in government, which is a parliament. So one member cannot be called parliament, but a group of them are parliament. And you also showed us in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, where, the, where Paul was saying, as the body is one, 
and has many members, so is Christ. So it's a collective or a group of them. Yeah. Then you took us to Revelation 14, verse 1, um, where the Bible says that I looked and uh, I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on the foreheads. And here you mentioned to us that Mount Zion is a mountain of prophecy. And in this case, um, this signifies scripture. Scripture were first written on the forehead of the prophets before it was written in the 144 books. And also verse 2 where the Bible says that, um, and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of uh, many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of the harpers harping with their harps and they, were, they sang as it were a new song before the throne. And here you mentioned to us that sound signifies harmony. The, all the prophets bef, uh, who lived before all spoke the same thing. Then you also took us, you, you took us back to uh, the concept of the Christ, where you mentioned to us that no man can be Christ, but he can be the Christ. In Hebrews, uh, uh, the Christ means the anointed one. And then in, in rather in Greek, it means the anointed one, while in Hebrew it means uh, Messiah. So Isaiah was the Christ because he was anointed. Ezekiel was the Christ because he was uh, the anointed one. And then um, in Matthew 24, you showed us that uh, the Bible says you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Um, and here you mentioned to us that what, what, we, what is written here is actually happening. All these things are happening. But the Bible says that uh, the end is not yet near. And here you mentioned to us that the end is not yet near because the purpose of the Adamic mind is not yet uh, revealed. Then you also showed us that in the verses that came later, that uh, all this, whatever is this, the Bible describes there, is what we are seeing. And you showed us that in verse 13, the Bible says, he that shall endure um, to the end, the same shall be saved. And so um, you showed us here that um, true freedom, or freedom of speech, is freedom to speak the truth. And you showed us that, but man, man has gone away from the truth and created um, his own truth. Truth comes by the Son of Man, because God speaks to the Son of Man. The, the word is brought or spoken to the Son of Man. And so to understand truth, you need the son of man. And I think in the same uh, chapter, verse 14 to 15, uh, where the Bible says, and this gospel shall be preached um, as a witness to, to all the nations, then shall the end come. When you see these things, uh, in verse 15 it says, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by uh, Daniel, the, prof the prophets, stand in the holy place. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountain, into the mountains. And here you showed us that um, the, the fleeing to the mountains is an allegory of the word. We need to flee to the truth, which is fleeing to the word. Fleeing into the mountains is synonymous to fleeing to the word every Sunday, like we are now about to listen to the word. Because we are seeing all these things happening, so much pain in the world. And so we ought to flee to the word. We ought to run uh, to the word. And as opposed to in verse 17 and all the way to 20, where it was showing that there was the running back to other ideologies. The allegory means that it's running back to religion, running back to man's ideas, worshiping man, and so forth. And in verse 20, where the Bible says, pray that these do not come in the winter. Here, the winter, you showed us that it's an allegory of a time when there's no light leaning away from the sun. In the winter, as we see in geography, is basically when the sun is, uh, is on the other side, and then the side that this is, is away from the sun experiences uh, um, more or less like the dark days, as well as the days that do not have enough light. So here you showed us that this winter um, symbolizes being away from the light, when there's no son of man to show you the word. So, and then in verse 22, when the Bible says, but for the elect's sake, those days 
shall be saved. For the sake of those who know the truth, those days shall be saved. And then in John 12, um, where Christ was saying, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me the commandments of what I should say and what I should speak. Here you, you mentioned to us that when Jesus was prophesying, he was hoping to bring the Son of Man. Because in Ezekiel, we see in Ezekiel 2 verse 8, we see um, God is uh, saying to the prophet Ezekiel, But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like the rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat that which I give thee. So here he reminds us again that the scriptures are written to the Son of Man and not to everyone. So the Son of Man opens his mind, takes in the scripture. And every time, he also showed us, I think, in the same chapter, in verse 9, where it, it talks about every time the Son of Man comes, there's a hand that comes before him. Uh, for example, before Elijah, before Christ, Elijah was. So all the prophets were the hands that came before the re revealing of the Son of Man. Then you also showed us that uh, the, the coming of the truth or the embracing of the truth, there is always a, lament a lamentation. It's, it's not a, a pleasant time because it pages out our, our Adamic mind. It takes out what is not of God. So it's meant to page us and make us ready for the 7,000 year period. So when you worship God, you actually are, when you worship, when you worship, you, um, you, when you're speaking the word, it's a form of worship, you're actually worshiping the word. You're moving the word from, uh, you're basically shipping the word. And I think you've explained this a lot to us in the previous sessions, what true worship means. Yeah, and then you also showed us that um, uh, until we change, we'll always be divisors of illusions. Until we allow the truth to dwell in us and be able to control our responses, our behaviors, and our everyday life, we'll always be divisors of illusions and not granters of dominion, which means we'll always have the devilish mind and not the godly mind. And you also showed us that scriptures were meant not to agree with us, it's not always that we agree, but they were meant to bear witness. Yeah, and so we see this even when Christ was uh, preaching. And you showed us that every time religion and human beliefs open, um, every time uh, religion as well as human beliefs, um, we, we open our minds to, to those, they are actually all devising illusions. And you also mentioned to us that just like bones stick to the flesh until it's ripe, the Son of Man must stick to the truth until it is revealed. You showed us in Psalms 100 where it says, Know ye that the Lord is God and we are the sheep of his pasture. You also showed us that a wicked mind is nothing but the force of nature and they are all under the, con the command of God. And you showed us that currently in the world we live in, which is the Adamic world, the status quo is wrong. Um, we see this in our behavior towards each other, in causing pain towards each other. But in Luke, where the Bible says, O Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets, uh, here you, the allegory you, you showed us is that Jerusalem is meant to be a compass. It's meant to be a compass for humanity, which is created to show the way, or which is supposed to house the truth. And it's not the physical Jerusalem but it's the spiritual Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all. And you showed us that, but here um, in Luke, the Bible, there's a lamentation that actually Jerusalem is killing the prophets. And then you showed us that true unity uh, for, hum for humanity, everybody, black, yellow, white, brown, yellow, true uh, um, uh, unity will only come when all the races are united. You showed us in Ezekiel 1, where the, uh, where the Bible says um, a whirlwind came and li the likeness of a living creature and it, they had, it had four wings and all the four wings were joined together. You showed us that this, and, and also uh, this had the face of a man. You showed us that this 
will only will, true unity, true love, and the truth will only fully exist in mankind if at all we unite and love and be kind to each other. And then you also showed us that man by nature, because of the Adamic mind, judges according to the situation. But when wronged, never use your emotions as it always backfires. You showed us this in First Corinthians 6, 7. Yeah. Then you also mentioned to us that man is being created from the Adamic mind and the Christ mind, the two. And you showed us in Ephesians um, 2.15, you verified that using Ephesians 2.15, where the Bible says, having abolished in his own flesh the enmity, even the law of the commandments contained in the ordinances, for to make... Um, for to make in himself of fine one new man. So the formation, the formation of one new man is uh, basically the, the Adamic mind and the Christ mind. It's creating a new man. And you also showed us that um, unlike the physical world, in the spiritual world, the foundation comes first and not last. And you showed us that even in a home setup, we should work in a home setup like a marriage. Um, we should not, we sh it's not about how we feel, but it's what it is. The fact that if, if it's about how you feel, then that changes all the time. How you feel about your spouse, for example, you showed us that this changes every minute or every second. But what doesn't change is the technicality that you're actually married to them. So you also showed us that humanity was fashioned by the truth. Hence, true redemption will come by the truth on the last day in the 7,000 year period. You also showed us that Moses was the generation, was the seventh generation from Abraham. I think here you are showing us the symbol of the seventh, uh, the 7,000 year period, the symbol of seven being a number of completion. You showed us that Moses was the generation from Adam. So redemption always comes on the seventh day. All the godliness that we are looking for or we've, we've sought for in the 7,000 year period is available in the 7,000 year period, which is a complete unit. Completion of a, which is a complete unit and the completion of a project. And you showed us that Abraham was the first to explain God, the, Abrahamic dispensation, the first to explain God to people in a rational way. He was not the first to believe in God, but he started the process of bringing God down to earth. And you also showed us that Abraham introduced the notion that our goal wasn't to be in heaven, but to bring down God on earth. And so we are living in a time where we are seeing a lot of uh, people's focus, religion, focus being on utopia. But in Matthew 6, 10, you showed us that the Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So meaning the kingdom, God wants to dwell in the lowest part of the earth. And so the goal is to bring down God in the lowest part of the earth. And we saw this with Moses at Mount Sinai, whose project was completed because uh, uh, God came down uh, on Mount Sinai. So... Moses was, the, was uh, he built a portable temple. Yeah, we saw that, we see that Moses built a portable temple and God came down on Mount Sinai. And you also showed us that there's one plan that God wants to, that wants to, he wants to achieve, which is dwelling in the lowest part of the earth, of the earth. Ultimately, you've mentioned that God is about oneness, but comes in stages as we see in the Torah, which is at the first five books of the Old Testament. If we look at Genesis, it's about who God is. Uh, Exodus explains where, Leviticus explains the how, the numbers is the when, and Deuteronomy is the conclusion of the 7,000 year period, the perfect complete world, which is, signifies a physical location. Then you also showed us that 2,000 years uh, ago or later when Christ the Christ principle began this is now Christ basically brought the principle the internalization of everything which we see in Colossians 127 and also Luke 7 1 so 
uh, you closed off by saying the internal has to find expression on the outside. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is about it. Wow. Awesome. That's a mouthful. Thank you very much, Mama Buka. That's very insightful and very elaborate. I know, folks, some of you were with us last week. At least it's, it makes it easy what I was saying. You know, sometimes I will just go into these uh, mysteries. Sometimes people might not uh, understand. So sometimes it's always good to have a someone who can break it down for us to just pick up um, to understand you know because uh, the word of god is a loaf is a is a it's like a, a loaf of bread 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 is eaten in different ways by different people you cannot give uh, the whole loaf of bread to a five-year-old child to swallow you need to break it down so break it down to a level people different understanding would would, uh, would get it so folks that's what we have been having and it has been awesome as you can see mamunguka thank you very much you have really done a good job so we are about the truth we are, are about understanding who we are on it and folks listen we are here all of us failing in our nature we come here to grow we come here to learn and grow we are all a product of the adamic mind which is a fallen mind we are all fallen there's no one i'm not i'm not without sin in fact i always say i'm the least if you put us on the line i'll be the worst sinner probably but thank god for the truth i always come here and every day i'm growing it's helping me folks I want to talk to you of, you know, we need to understand how the human mind has been deceived to do wrong things, evil things, some of the things, some of the shortfalls Mamulumbuka was uh, talking about. You know, we need to begin to understand uh, who we are and uh, just understand our, uh, how damaged we have been under the Adamic nature. The Adamic mind has really, has, has really damaged us. And we need to begin to understand that the truth has come to set us free. You know, I think, please give me a, just a few minutes for me to just indulge you into something which will help you look at the whole life in a different perspective. I think or perhaps it would be important, folks, at least useful, to try to understand a little better some of the mysterious workings that occur within ourselves. I'll be very slow and I want us to understand. There are a lot of mysterious things occurring within ourselves. And of the most of these, and the, of the most important of these is generally refers to as intuition. I want you to understand who you are and how you can come back to, the, to your strength. Because remember, God created you to 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 deputizing. So the most important of these generally are what we call intuitions. What it is, how it originates, how it functions has not yet been standardized or classified. How intuition works, how it functions, what it is, man has not yet standardized it or classified it. Because man man's mind is illusions there's no clarity in our minds mind man has what is called of course from we understand we have what is called six sensory machines of course we say work with five senses but I'm, I'm adding another one the sixth one which i'm going to explain to you man has what is called six sensory machines these consist of the five senses with which we are familiar with and the sixth factor which is called the mental coordinator in science maybe my point mamunguka is a neuroscientist maybe she might understand this word vestibular system are we, are we in line, Mamrumbuka? 
It's a yes, vestibular sir, you are. System. Vestibular yes, you are. system. Yes. So the purpose of the mental coordinator is to compute the testimonies of the sensory perceptions. The most important faculties are the faculties of sight and hearing. Those are the most important for human beings, sight and hearing. Job 13, one. Lo, mine eye has seen all this. Mine ear has heard and understood it. You see, most important faculties are sight and hearing. Job 13. <laughs> Uh, once the Lord does, the Lord does. All right, noted. So Job 31 says, Lo, mine eyes, sight, I've seen all this, my ears here, I've heard and understood it. An individual is in substance and essence, constantly adding to his store of knowledge. I want to be very slow for us to understand. Every, every individual is in substance and essence, constantly adding to his store of knowledge, but is not aware of the process. Man is dynamic. That's why I'm here to preach to him, right? because man is, when, when the truth comes in man, he becomes a God. Christ says, it was said you are gods unto whom the word came. So that's why we have hope for humanity. That's why I will never stop speaking. Not even a bullet, not even other human abusing will stop me. I will speak, not even people taking out my deadly name will stop me, but I will always strive to, to, to grow and change and be a better person. So an individual is, is in this sense and be in substance and this sense constantly adding to his store of knowledge, but is not aware of the process. That's where the sad part is. We are adding these things, but we're not aware. But the subconscious, but subconsciously is aware of all of them. And we know through, if you want, if you want to, to prove this, because man wants proof. They always ask Christ, show us the proof. And we know through hypnotic research and through regression, for those who want to, because this message is, I want to preach to everyone, the four human beings, black, white, yellow, and brown, scientists, Shintoism, Christian, everyone. We know through hypnotic research and through regression, and I would, let me uh, define some of these words for you. Regression, I know you know, you can check in the dictionaries. Regression, a return to an area state, an abnormal state in which development that has stopped immaturity. Psy that's in, in psyche, Psy psychiatry. Or a defense mechanism in which you flee from reality by assuming a more infantile state. Man tends to do that, flee from reality, but we want to bring you back to reality. So that there is scarcely a, a detail in the life of an individual which is not permanently recorded. This record is due to the constant, precise function of the mental coordinator. I mentioned about the mental coordinator, and you realize that when I'm talking about the mental coordinator, I'm actually talking about the crust in you, the hope of glory. That is where the hope of humanity is, in the mental coordinator, which we are calling the sixth mechanical system, including the five senses plus one, called the mental coordinator, the crash in you, the hope of glory. The faculty takes control of all types of phenomena. It gives us a constant insight into everything that makes up our daily living, the crash in us. It also exercises a censorship. For when something occurs to us, which is centrally to the basic structure of our nature, this difference, this inconsistency is also listed. Today, folks, especially the environment, is constantly bombarding us with materials which is not essential, not useful, and even is dangerous or detrimental. This is also filtered out by, by the coordinator. That's why you are not smoking dagger, you are not uh, 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 drinking, or you are not doing any evil thing because your sensor is able to work. It's, it's able to, 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 the coordinator is able to sensor. This also 
It showed that Baba Nekoneta, and as a result of this, the individual learns not only what to do, but what not to do. It's that part of you which I'm talking about, the trust in you, but I'm using your language for you to understand. Because sometimes we use the, the, the scripture language and people think we are biased to one religion, but we're talking about natural truth. So the actual record of experience is being brought in through the coordinator, the trust in you. There is a relationship about this problem and that of conscience, but conscience is essentially a moral issue arising in the internal psychic integration. The actual record of experience is brought in through the coordinator. The cross in you is the record keeper also. Because it's the only part of you that can be truthful. You know, even when you lie, when you go in your bed, there's that part in you which says that you lie. That's the mental coordinator. That's the cross in you. It's, it's the only one which can keep a record because it's the only one which is truthful in us. So please, let me just bring back the, the folks on on um on zoom this is awesome let's just have a wonderful sh uh, time for now as we go on finishing our sunday lessons today we just bring them back in zoom folks were kicked out as usual all right as we wait for them we can still continue yes so i'm saying um the, mm, the record keeping of course is through the coordinator. Now the reason that is possible is because nature is a systematic structure. Man begins to understand that nature is a systematic structure. We are teaching man to take to take back the land, the earth. That is what the uh, Mbuka was trying to explain as a seven thousand year period in which man begins to hear the vibration and the rhythm of nature. We take back, we begin to understand that nature has got deep structure. Nature is uh, a systematic structure. We begin to know that, okay, the folks are coming back. Okay, we've got them back. Thank you. The Zoom people are back again. See if we can record again. Recording in progress. Awesome. So, nature is a systematic structure. Nature does not feed into the sensory perception and sensor materials. It brings to the sensory perception a great deal of rather classified information. Okay, Zoom people, you're welcome to this again. So, it brings in also new ideas. It reminds us of things long past. It brings the wisdom of our childhood to bear upon the thoughtfulness of our mature years. From the cradle to the grave, the record is unbroken for us. That's why when I come and ignite the sense that I'm the coordinator I do, it begins to remind you of things you have learned. It, it, it brings the goodness which is in you, which is hiding because of the evil materials we are exposed to. So I'm saying from the cradle to the grave, the record is unbroken. The, the crust in you keeps the right things, the true things which are in you. Nearly all information regarding to the material life of man originates in his environment. Everything you know up to now, folks, originated from your environment. Man does not know anything before he was born and after he was born. So I don't know why people want to describe the before or the afterlife. How do you describe something which has never been in the human brain? Every human being who has lived on earth has not had that in their mind. I'm saying that nearly all information regarding to the material life of man or less in his environment. Everything we know came from what was lived, what we've seen, what we've learned. The individual is placed in a situation in which he is constantly taking in material. You notice the social life, the social media we have today is going to create a very bad 
in a, uh, in a generation. Because these are taking me every material. It's because an individual is constantly taking in materials. Recognizing it and releasing it again into his environment. So whatever you get from the environment is what you release. The, the, this uh, folks, uh, social media now is very toxic. So you'll be taking in toxic, toxicity and releasing toxicity. So therefore, for us to begin to understand what I'm trying to tell you is that I want to teach you how to be silent. Silent doesn't mean not talking. Silent means you stop seeking that which, which feeds your appetite. But you stop seeking that which feeds the truth's appetite. Therefore, in silence, man gains the wisdom of the God nature. In silence, you gain the wisdom of the Christ in you. The Bible says, keep silent, I am the Lord. It means stop looking for your own ideas. Stop using your ego, eroding God out. So um, the, strict, the truth is bidding us all to keep silent. Forget about social media. Forget about who is coming to talk rubbish or who is, who is judging you, who is, uh, or you know, social media is, is putting you on site. You are on this one side, and all of you are just chasing one another, hating each other. So in silence, man gains the wisdom of the coordinator. Silence means you stop your human appetite. And every time he opens his mouth, he expresses some parts of his coordinated knowledge. When he's in silence, the coordinator will teach him. Actually, we are not conscious of the large part of the basic factors of attitudes. We do not know really why we think the way we do. That's a fact. We get lost. Who are we? Why do we think the way? Or why do I do what I do? We do not know why we have certain reactions to occasions and occurrences. The, coordinate, the, the coordination goes beyond our conscious mind. That's why it's called it's a spiritual part of man. It goes beyond our conscious mind. The intuitive person is most likely to be a person who is essentially mentally and emotionally honest. Let me say that again. The intuitive person, a spiritual person, is most likely to be a person who is essentially mentally and emotionally honest. Honest means to keep silent your desires. You let the desires of truth, which is the absolute truth, take over. Intuition functions in spite of mental interference to some degree. Intuition is what you're calling the, your spiritual part. It can work without the interference of your mental, of your Adamic mind. Adamic mind just takes us, all of us, when we allow Adamic mind, me inclusive, everyone, it just takes us into doing wrong things. Intuition functions in spite of mental interference to some degree, but more likely and completely where his mental interference is eliminated. We are saying you need to eliminate your mental interference, your Adamic mind, your ego, E-G-O, E, eroding G, God out. Ego means eroding God out. When you use your ego, you have removed God from your equation. But how do we eliminate the mental interference? We need to allow this coordinating process to function smoothly. How are we going to eliminate the mental interference? That's why we're here on this house of talk. Learning how to coordinate, we need to allow this process, this coordinating process, to function smoothly. Give up, let the trust in you take over. Forget about how you feel, always look at what the absolute truth wants how it feels paul when he's explaining this he uses the allegory of the woman and the man and i've showed you before that the bible is not a history book it's a prophetic book it's a book of allegory it's a book of prophecy so when paul is talking about a woman is actually talking about the mind. When he's talking about the man, 
He's talking about the connector. There's the crust in you. First Timothy 2, 11 says, let the woman learn in silence. That is what I was saying just now when I said we need to allow this coordinating process to function smoothly. We need to eliminate the mental interference. The mental is the woman. So let the woman lay in silence with all subjection. This is not what they tell you in the region you start debating. Is it the, the, the two-legged woman? It's not. That is uh, childish. But we are talking about truth as it is. The woman is a mind. Verse 12 says, Timothy 2.12, it says, But I suffer not a woman to teach. God doesn't want your mentor to teach you. You have to go beyond that. He wants to connect her. The Christ in you to teach you. But I suffer not a woman to teach, not to assert authority over the man. It's a good nature, the Christ in you. But to be in silence. You see? Those are, I'm using the scriptures but trying to explain things in your own language. So we need to allow this coordinating process to function smoothly. We need the mind to, to keep silent. So Paul also uh, reminds us here, uh, here on um, on um, uh, First Corinthians eleven. I'm sorry, rather Second Corinthians eleven. I wanted to show you that the woman with your mind is not an uh, it's not Bible, it's not history. Second Corinthians eleven, this one. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly. And indeed bear with me. There's two. For I'm um, jealousy over you with godly jealousy. For I've expelled you to one husband. That husband is truth. I'm, just like I'm, I'm marrying you folks to one husband. I don't want you to be married to your mind and to the, to the coordinator. I'm marrying you to the coordinator, to the Christ in you. I've expelled you to one husband that I may present you as a chest victim to Christ, to truth. Verse 3 is what I'm looking for. 2 Corinthians 11, 3. But I fear, we're always in fear, I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled, beguiled Eve through his subtility. Remember, Eve it is presented in the Bible as a woman. The serpent, remember I showed you serpent is the Adamic mind, is the illusion of mind. Serpent is the devil. Devil is a uh, is a devil has the two words, like we said, T E V divider, I double L of illusion. So the see, but I fear less by means as the serpent, the devil, the illusion, because if which is the mind, through his subtility. So your mind, so Paul is giving is is comparing the serpent to the mind. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So, that is what we're talking about in the scriptures when we mentioned the mind. False learning, folks. Human learning, Adamic learning, false learning betrays the coordinator, the Christ in you. But that does not attain the victory. False learning betrays the coordinator. You, you, you can learn the Adamic mind, the Adamic knowledge, and you betray the truth. But that does not attain the victory because the coordinator, the Christ in you, sorts it out. Christ says, I am not here to judge anyone, but the coordinator, the Christ in you, the words that I speak, they shall judge you. You might, you, you might, over, you might win, your mind might win over the Christ in you. And you start doing evil things. But be rest assured that you'll be, so, you'll be sought out. The coordinator sorts it out. But it can betray the conscious mind. It can lead the conscious mind into a variety of difficulties. One of the law in, in nature, folks, just like the truth, the way that the truth created this, this world we live in. One of the law, one of the law in nature that we cannot resist. You and I can never resist. You can resist my, my teaching. You can resist this house of talk. 
You can resist me. But one of the law about this truth I'm talking about, which you can never resist, one of the law in nature that we cannot resist is the law of cause and effect. The computer waits upon this basic fact all the time. Garbage in, garbage out. That one, even if you are fighting with my truth, but that's the truth I'm trying to show you. Every cause has an effect. Every cause has, 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 has an effect. When we use the frontal mind, like in uh, neurology, Mamlon Bukhar is, is a guru in that. But when we use the, the front of mind, only cause and effects are hopelessly confused, but they are never confused in the coordinator. If you use your mind, you get confused about the cause and effects. But in the crust in you, they are not confused. Everything that we do has results and consequences, folks. That's what I'm saying. That's why we are here to help us not to have wrong results and consequences. The coordinator is prophetic. The Christ in you. See now, you are beginning to understand the, the scripture language. The coordinator is prophetic, not because it has some mysterious properties beyond comprehension, but because it's basically and essentially honest. When they say this man is prophetic, it's because they're honest. The Christ in you is prophetic, the coordinator is prophetic, the Christ in you is prophetic. Not because it has some mysterious faculties, illusions beyond comprehension, but because it's basically and essentially honest. Be honest to yourself. That's what we are saying. Not to me, not to every man, salvation is personal. Be honest to yourself and begin to watch the truth, learn the truth, and live by the truth. And honest results in a result of prophetic power. Spiritual mind, which we call in science intuition, is the clear recognition of values. When people say this man is spiritual because they recognize they have a clear recognition of values. The average priest or minister in many instances can tell you immediately the problem of a person who comes to him for assistance. It is some, it is some way written on that person. A person, when you, when you look at them, sometimes you will tell them what they want, what, they are, what problems they are in. It is not a transference of thought. It's not because that minister has got the magical power. It's the recognition of symptoms and, and proper process of association of ideas. This person knows you, they associate with you. An individual must be with that, but what I'm, I'm trying to show you that honesty must be in you, and you, an individual must be without prejudice. I'm trying to speak something to someone. Honesty, and we must always be without prejudice. All persons can be intuitive than they are. You can be a spiritual person when you remove ego, eroding God out. You're always moving God out, ego eroding God out. So and you must be, have an honest, honest mind. Honest, do I mean be honest to me or your neighbor? Honest yourself. And you must be without prejudice. All persons can be intuitive than they are. You know, when your coordinator is pure, when you are in silent, the coordinator will even speak to you in dreams. Job to talk about, you know, your mind will start, remember I told you whatever you grasp from the environment is what you release. If you are grasping bad things from social media, you release that. If you are grasping bad things from your, whoever teaches you things, you become like that. But dreams that are meaning come to us from the coordinator, from the spiritual, from the past in you. They come through symbols, through hunches. Job talks about that in the book of Job Summer. One thing we have to do is to gain some form of mental honesty. 
Folks, today I want to talk to you about honesty to yourself. Be honest to yourself. Mental honesty. This is really the beginning of the whole mystery. Really the, the beginning of the whole world I'm talking about. The beginning of the world, among uh, uh, mentioned the seven thousand year period. Mental honesty. Then you begin to let the mind take over. Give up. Let the Christ, I mean, let the truth take over. Give up. Let the truth take over. The beginning of all the mystery. It's not the end because there is more to it than honesty. But honesty is probably the most important single ingredient in what we are cooking for. If you can add honesty to yourself, honest means that we must stop. Hear me. Honest means that we must stop fooling or deceiving ourselves, especially doing wrong things knowingly. That is bad. For all of us, for me, for you folks. I'm not shouting at anyone. I'm shouting at, 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 at us because we're all in this world where our minds are adamic. We need to come out of this. It's holding us. So we need to, especially doing wrong things, honestly, I mean, knowingly, honest means we must stop fooling or deceiving ourselves, especially doing wrong things knowingly. We must gradually reduce this error factor. Starting from the day, begin gradually. It must not be boom, because our 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 illusion is distorted. But we can gradually reduce this error factor. We must stop thinking, feeling, or acting dishonesty. This is a very hard order for many people. I know that because you are in it already. Now how do I come out? And it's nice. The wrong thing. It's a very hard order for many people. Many don't even realize that they are being dishonest. They have stopped realizing. I mean, they have, they have stopped thinking they are being dishonest. For them, they are being honest. They don't realize that. That's why it's hard order for many people. They have no realization that every day they are compromising principle in order to advance some personal desire. Every time you advance your personal desire, you are compromising principle, and you are now reshaping the earth, and the earth is going to be toxic for you. So these individuals wish their happiness first, but that's not what this life wants you to do. It's not about your happiness first. Spirituality, folks, is the doctrine of humility. And a spiritual expects to be a servant. You say I live in the spirit, then and I understand you, the spirit is the word, the truth. He's supposed to be a servant. He is not trying to gain something for himself. I'm not you are not here for us to give you something for yourself. We are here to usher in the seven thousand year period, Mamru Buka explained to that precisely. So the final solution to all this is compassion. Compassion, infinite self-sacrifice for the common good. People must be seeing that you're sacrificing for them, family, starting from your wife, you sacrifice a lot of things for them, your children, the, the community, the world. The moment you begin to join the material world, you join the world of competition. And competition becomes a basis of delusion. Delusion, delusion, delusion. For competition itself is a delusion, folks. <laughs> That's why you notice in my life, for those who know me, I, I never compete. I can't even watch any competitive games. Not that they are wrong, it's just me. But I can't do competition. I'd, I'd rather do creation. I create, I don't compete. So competition itself is a delusion. Nothing will ever be solved by it. Nothing by competition because it's a constantly because it is constantly destroying the basic friendships, the basic kinship which should exist in human society. If you are competing, you have to be on different sides, and you have to compromise your friendship, your kinship. 
So competition is a, is a delusion. It's, it becomes a basis for delusion. When you compete, you pick sides. And picking sides means you destroy the basic friendship, the basic kinship which should exist in human society. But a spiritual person we're talking about therefore comes mostly to those who by nature have chosen to follow a faith. The spiritual mind, spiritual, spirituality, therefore comes mostly to those who by nature have chosen to follow a faith or a spiritual path of growth. These people do develop a strong sense of faith. Faith is dependency upon truth. Again, okay, most to come truth, a dependence upon God. God is truth. And when you have you have faith and truth because you are selfless. You don't have ego. And remember, selflessness means you are meek. To be meek means you are tamed from doing your own things but doing the things. The truth has tamed you. Remember, when you, when you say an animal is tamed, it never behaves the way it wants. It has been trained to behave the way the master wants it to behave. So when you are meek, meek is a, is a, is a, is a King James Version English word. The, the, which is which means tempt. So when the Bible says in, in Matthew 5, verse 5, blessed are the meek, blessed are the tempt, for they shall inherit the earth. The earth is only going to be good to those who are tempted to do the things which are the truth. People have reached a level where they say, your will be done and not my will. People have no ego. The meek are those who have accepted the universal law. Let me use your, your language, human folks. When you say you are meek, you have accepted the universal law. Not I will say, if whatever the world beats me, what does it want me to do? Not and what, how does it want me to do it? Not how should I do it to please myself? The universal law, God's law, the law which is God itself. And this God in you is what we call the Holy Spirit. The Spirit are words. The words that I speak are spirit. They are Holy Spirit because they are, they are the truth. The Holy Spirit and this mysterious inner voice. This mysterious power which gave an accuracy to every thought and made every, every statement a revelation was actually derived from this computerization process within human consciousness itself. This does not mean God is not in the business. It means that the computerization process is a divine process. Trust in you. It's a process not based on materialism, so we're talking about, but upon the exploration of the spiritual potential of a human being. I hope this is making sense, folks. Is this making sense? This is awesome. If you follow what I'm talking about, we are going to usher in a group of people who are perfect. And folks, you are free to join this. This is for you. This is for the human race. We are a household talk. We are a family which you can join to and find rest. And you know, like I said, you, can, you, are, you are free to join, be a part of it. It will help you. So folks, for with those short words, I don't know if uh, Mbamlumbuka, would you want to, to say some one or two things on what I've explained? My host? Um, I think for me, it's just to um, the, appreciate how you have brought together the scientific concept of intuition, um, the scientific concept of consciousness with that being a concept of spirituality and Christ in us, the hope of glory and how uh, it has shown us that it's, it's not the absence of this of spirituality per se, uh, but understanding what it is. I think for me, uh, in a nutshell, I would say that you've helped us understand that spirituality is a very much, um, you know, real phenomena. It's just that we have to understand what it is and what it's not. 
because I think half of the time we don't understand what it's what it is, and we become um, very vulnerable to deception. We become vulnerable to um, all sorts of human ideologies as to what it is. You know, that's when you hear maybe things like, oh, in a certain part of the world, maybe the 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 you know the certain maybe the spiritual sect or leader was making people eat snakes in order to experience something that's out of it to have an out of the body experience or they were making them you know like i think i was reading some some article on social media the other day how uh, i think within this same country a young girl was was um was lured into um into canon knowledge with a, a you know a church leader because she was told that that's how she'll be cured of her stomach problems. She was having some stomach issues. So if only we understand what you are telling us today about what true spirituality is, what it is, and 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 how um, that part of us, the intuition, the insight, is the Christ in us, the hope of glory, the part of us that that tries to um, maybe censor what is right and what is wrong what as 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 we are experiencing our environment and our everyday living the part of us that has the essence of doing right the part of us that has compassion the part of us that has self sacrifice like you said a compassion for a fellow human being love if we could recognize that as being true spirituality i think for me that is very liberating yeah that's what i would say Thank you, sir. Awesome. It's true. And I agree with you very much so. Man has been lured to, 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 to live in a delusion, in, in an illusion of mind. Well, that's why even when you are trying to explain uh, earlier before I came in, you mentioned what I said, that uh, when we are not living in the truth, then we are living in a, in a then our mind is devising illusion. In short, in an, in an acronym, is a day of divider of illusion. That's awesome. From Zoom, Mwabe, do you want to say something? Um, I'm going to follow the next question. Uh, I think uh, for now, I'll just pass. Uh, but I'm really very open. The first question and the second question. And, the second question. and uh, I really love the summary from Mwabe. I think that was... Uh, uh, it was, on, it was on point. He summarized it so well that he was uh, also speaking <laughs> at that stage. So, and also, I've also appreciated the second question where you, uh, I think one of the points I really appreciated was the fact that you mentioned that uh, the internal always wants to have an expression in the outside environment. And that expression sometimes has to do with our thoughts and also our intuition. So I think that's just an appreciation from what you said. I think much of it, I will need to just grasp it. And uh, I really appreciate it. So. Thank you very much, Martin. Folks, this has been awesome. Like I was promised, our time is just between 9.30 to 11, and this is 11 on the dot. We will have to wrap it up from here. We will see you next week. Please come. And for all of you who are hearing this every time, and Please, you've got a, a resting place. Join us. Let's have a good time. Let's grow something. Let's create a people who are living a life which they, they were intended to live. People who are being, who are opening up. People who are living a life not full of pain or suffering or an illusion of life. Come and let us have the truth discussed here. You're welcome every Sunday, 9.30 to, to 11.00. And of course, these, these, are, these recordings are, are saved on Facebook and on YouTube. And please, when you go to YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and to like. I want to appreciate you all, Mamunbuka. We are going now. I don't know what you want to say to the world, to the people before we go. Um, no, just to say thank you for everybody that tuned in. And uh, every Sunday is a time to be in class. 
to run to the mountain, to flee to the mountain, which is the word, like you showed us last time. So it's, it's comforting to know that despite all the pain we're seeing in the world, we have somewhere to flee to, which is to the mountain, the, the you know, Zion being the mountain, which is the word of God. Thank you. Amen, folks. Bye. See you next Sunday. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.